This morning, President Trump under fire for offensive comments questioning the loyalty of Jewish people. The controversy surrounds President Trump's claim that Jewish people are disloyal if they support the Democratic Party. Have a listen. Where has the Democratic Party gone? Where have they gone where they're defending these two people over the state of Israel? And I think any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat, uh, I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. 2020 Democratic candidate and frontrunner Joe Biden slammed President Trump's comments, tweeting, Mr. President, these comments are insulting and inexcusable, just like your previous dual loyalty insinuations. Stop dividing Americans and disparaging your fellow citizens. It may not be beneath you, but it is beneath the office you hold. I'm joined now by Jonathan Greenblatt. He is CEO, national director as well for the Anti-Defamation League. Mr. Greenblatt, we appreciate you taking the time this morning. Thank you for having me. I, I want to quote from something you tweeted after the president made these comments because it was quite strong. And you said, it's unclear who POTUS, president of the United States, is claiming Jews would be disloyal to, but charges mm -hmm. of disloyalty have long been used to attack Jews. As we've said before, it's possible to engage in the democratic process without these claims. It's long overdue to stop using Jews as a political football. Explain what you mean by that. Well, as I tweeted, while it's a bit unclear what the president was trying to say in terms of who Jews are disloyal to, are we disloyal to him or the Republican Party or to America? While he wasn't exactly clear about that, I will be exactly clear on what that was, anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. The charge of disloyalty or dual loyalty has been used against Jews for thousands of years. In Europe it was used for 1,500 years to say that Jews were not sufficiently loyal to the church or the crown. And so it, they justified persecuting, mm -hmm. marginalizing, and murdering Jews in the countries where they lived. And over the last hundred years in the Middle East, they would say that Jews were more loyal to Israel than the countries where they lived. And they would use that as justification to persecute, marginalize, and murder these people where they lived. So today mm -hmm. in this country, when we're seeing a rise of white supremacy, when we're seeing a rash of anti-Semitic attacks, mm -hmm. look, it's almost yeah. two years to the day of the Charlottesville march. It's, we're getting on the year anniversary of the Pittsburgh massacre, the most violent anti-Semitic act in American history. It is bewildering that we even have to have this conversation and that these words are coming out of the Oval Office. Yeah. You know, the president has used that anti-Semitic attack uh, against these congresswomen uh, in, in particular, but you also hear other administration officials and Republican lawmakers using that term, while at the same time, the president has been reluctant at times to call out white supremacists in this country who are explicitly, and by definition, anti-Semitic. I wonder your reaction to that contradiction. It is extraordinary and almost inexplicable that our commander in chief would use his Twitter feed to go after Hollywood celebrities and other random individuals, but can't seem to call out the racist xenophobic, anti-Semitic, white supremacist movement that is indeed growing. I mean, we see this. White nationalism is a global terror threat, and we need our commander-in-chief to call it out. But I will tell you this, Jim. It is, I've said this before. It is long past due for politicians to stop tokenizing Jews. Mm. We are not political props to be used for partisan mm. gain, whether by the president or members of his cabinet, or I'll be honest with you, members of Congress shouldn't talk to us about where we have our allegiances. We are Americans, first and foremost. And we need to yeah. be recognized for that and treated like everybody else. Mm. It's a strong statement. Uh, this morning, the president went a step further. I, you may have seen this. He tweeted a thank you to a conservative yep. radio host who said that Israeli Jews think Trump is like a second coming of God. It's a direct quote from the president of the United States Twitter account, some 50 million followers. Your reaction? It, it, it is truly breathtaking. First and foremost, I guess we shouldn't be surprised that the president is quoting a conspiracy theorist because he's done that many times before. But the idea that the White House is using that kind of person, you know, it's, it's extraordinary. 
But I will say that it is the height of hypocrisy to use Christian theology to bully Jews and to, you know, push out some messianic complex. L literally, it's hard to think of something less kosher than telling the Jewish people, you're the king of Israel, and therefore we should have some fidelity to you for that reason. I don't know if he's read the Bible, but in the Old Testament, that's not what we believe. Listen, I feel the strength of your views, uh, Jonathan. I appreciate you taking the time to, to, to come on the program. Thank you.